Hi, welcome to B.9 Biological Pigments. Now, we need to get through this without being overwhelmed. Uh, I think it's good to go straight to the bottom here and it says uh, that these molecules here are in section 35. So details of other pigment names and structures are not required. So the only structures and names, you don't need to know any structures and names. They're all in the data booklet if you need to know them. Uh, and you just need to know about uh, cooperative binding um, just basically and the other one is uh, conjugation so there's a lot of stuff to read through here and it's all different names of things uh, and you don't need to know them so let's just go through the important points okay so first of all um, is the conjugation so we're going to just um, you can read over that and I'm going to it's got some inform, important information in there that I'm going to double up on I might just read it uh, repetition is the mother of learning. Uh, so conjugation is alternating single and double bonds. These are in the p orbitals causing delocalized electrons as they go up and down these p orbitals they're absorbing uh, energy and the more conjugation there is uh, the less of these transitions, uh, the less distance, less energy, and therefore they're of a larger wavelength. And you can use your color wheel to determine what light is formed. So this is uh, one that's a little clearer. So more conjugation means more double bonds. And we will go through some examples soon. Uh, more p orbitals, more resonance between double and single bonds. This creates a lower energy difference between the interacting orbitals. The lower energy means light of a longer wavelength and the color, the color wheel will then tell you the answer. So do not need to go into humos and lumos and anything else. So just keep it simple about um, so what we're doing. There is also transition metals that are involved, but we don't really talk about them in this topic. Okay, so basically, if you see green, so if it's somewhere between 490 and 56, 560 nanometers, that is the result of the actual molecule absorbing this sort of area, 650 to 750, and you don't get to see red because that gets absorbed. You get to see everything else, and your eyes interpret that as green. So you just need to know how to use the color wheel. Whatever color you see, it's because the opposite color is being absorbed. So you should have touched on that, I think, in unit three, if you're high level. Uh, so more words, tempted not even to read them out. Um, so carotenes, uh, the important thing is it's a long hydrocarbon chain, therefore it has lots of these double bonds, single double bonds, so there's lots of conjugation, so there's definitely a color there. Uh, and it's because it's long, uh, it's also fat soluble if they ever decide to um, ask you about that um, and then you will see I'd like to compare the two so this one actually has uh, a yellow color so it's absorbing in the violet so if you go to another similar beta carotene um, just have a look if there's more or less conjugation so if I just just do a rough count of double bonds as an indicator one two three four five and I go to beta carotenes, you can see already that there's way more than five down here. Uh, so more conjugation, uh, so that means it'll absorbing, it's a lower energy, so it's absorbing at a longer wavelength, so we go in this direction, uh, and therefore we're not getting the yellow, we're getting colors in this direction. So that makes perfect sense. Um, even that's a little bit hard for the questions. I have some questions following this. Uh, with video answers on the website. So have a look at those. Uh, so porphyrins, again, uh, don't need to know all of that stuff. Um, you can see there's four nitrogen um, atoms. They conjugate uh, here in various other places. Um, and I'll move on. Uh, and this is very common to have this sort of structure set up with hemoglobins and myoglobins. Okay, so moving on to the uh, hemoglobin, because we need to talk, besides conjugation, we're going to talk about the oxidation, uh, oxygen saturation curves. So there are four subunits, um, just so you don't get confused in a question, just to know what they're talking about. And each of these units is, is a heme group that's joined together, so there's an iron in the middle. Um, so that's called a prosthetic group. Uh, so each heme molecule has four sort of heme groups that can hold on to four um, oxygen molecules and uh, red blood cells are made up of these, um, are filled with these heme 
proteins. Uh, this is the important one of the important terms to remember. Um, so this is cooperative binding. So what happens is when the oxygen binds to the heme group, it slightly changes it. I know it's hard to see, but there's a change. It's very hard to see. Spot the difference. There is a slight change, um, and that slightly increases the ability of the fur of further oxygens to bind into the other three spots. Uh, and so that's called cooperative binding. So you need to say that the oxygen affinity increases uh, when the first oxygen binds, and that's the first part of the S curve. Uh, and that's all they seem to care about the test. Uh, and so that's why this doesn't go off into a straight line. It actually gets quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, they never talk about the end point. Why does it curve this way? Um, once you have uh, almost complete saturation, there's not many molecules out there that are not saturated, and so it is harder for the oxygen uh, to find those to become completely saturated. Uh, so that's basic kinetics, uh, which is uh, basic rates of reaction, uh, just like you see in a rates of reaction curve, but you don't uh, see this uh, unless there's something like temperature, but then that's uh, more of a stable curve. Uh, and so there's lots of interesting things about the oxygen dissociation curve. This one's really interesting, that the hemoglobin A, uh, the fetal hemoglobin has a higher, is the protein has a higher affinity for oxygen than the mother's. Uh, and this makes sense because if the two are going to battle out, which they are, somehow you've got to get the oxygen released from the mother's blood into the baby's blood, and that's how they do it the protein from the baby, the fetal hemoglobin, is has a greater affinity. Otherwise, you wouldn't exist, all right? So there's a lot of other in interesting things. The temperature is one that comes up. The active site is altered, so it's gonna have less affinity, so you just redraw it, uh, but draw it um, to taking slightly longer. Um, this one also is another cool one here. Uh, so when you have um, pH that is quite low, that's because there's CO2. So CO2 forms uh, carbonic acid. Uh, and so carbonic acid. So when you're in the when you're in a part of the body where there's too much CO2, uh, what you want to what you want to have is is the oxygen not to bind as well and a, you know a further stimulus to release that whatever oxygen's left over in the red blood cells. Uh, because you need it, because there's, um, this, your system is saying oxygen's being taken up, and it's been through respiration, it's producing CO2. So that's another very cool thing about hemoglobin uh, and its affinity and how that aids in your body. So just I'll just read through this. So you haven't missed anything. Decrease with increased temperature due to conformational changes at active site um, and positive entropy of dissociation. You know, as you increase the temperature, you increase um, the entropy as well. Um, it prefers increased entropy, it's moving around faster. Uh, decreased pH uh, and increased pCO2, partial pressure of CO2, so the, the gas of CO2 is increased, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, act as non-competitive inhibitors, allowing more oxygen release in venous blood, where tissues uh, may be oxygen deprived. Okay, so that's just another way of saying it. So there's a lot there, so the oxidation uh, dissociation curves are a source, a huge source of questions. Uh, and so is conjugation. So that's all you really need to know. Why does CO uh, carbon monoxide kill you? Uh, because of this. Uh, it just locks onto the hemoglobin. Uh, there are some details there, 200 times more uh, greater affinity just for curiosity, but it just locks onto that. Uh, so that's not a chemical that we should have in our body and that's it would stuff everything up if that was part of our biochemical processes. Um, and so moving on, so again, I'm not spending a lot of time naming these compounds or their structures because there's not much to gain from that. So chlorophyll um, and hemoglobin look quite similar in this, in this way. Um, not that important. Names and structures, skipping it. Uh, this one here is important. Why do you have a whole range of different chlorophylls in the leaf? because each chemical absorbs at a different wavelength. So if you want the full spectrum of light that the sun gives out, um, a plant will use a range of different chemicals to be able to fully absorb the energy coming at a range of different wavelengths. And so we can move on. Um, just for the biologist a little bit more, the range of chemicals also means that there's a chain, and so there's different degrees of uh, oxidation and reduction. So in this case, um, they're accepting uh, from chemical to chemical to chemical and at each stage of that ATP is produced. 
Uh, so it's it's a way of capturing energy at different levels and passing it on. Okay, so undergo redox reactions, oxidize water and synthesize ATP. The last one there, I think, is anthocyanins. So they're just pigments for attraction, seed dispersal, antioxidants and protection against UV light. You can see that there's always lots of conjugation, double bonds, um, benzene rings and sometimes um, transition metals. And so lastly, as part of the syllabus, how do they um, change color? Why are they use as color indicators? Well, you can see that the conjugation is altered in pH. So I'm just looking for uh, a change. So there we go. pH change, pH change, so the hydrogens come off and there's a change in the conjugation. Uh, this one's added here and this one's removed here. So this conjugation changes, conjugation changes will cause um, color changes, which is what you need to know. Okay.